Here's five things that everybody should know about Dota 2, but I'm going to say that you probably don't know them all, or many people won't know them all, so you should watch. Anyway, here's, here's five things. Let's go. Number one, if you think someone is going to be initiating on you, for example, a stupid faceless void jumping into Chrono you, and you have access to a hex, a Yules, or an insta disable item like this, or an ability like a hex online, for example, you can actually pre-cast this if you have vision on them and uh, just kind of keep canceling it and pre-casting it so that when they do jump on you they'll instantly get hexed and then they'll probably call you a scripter and report you but the report won't work because you weren't actually scripting don't worry but this can be really useful because what happens is as soon as they get in range of that you've already given the command and they will immediately be hexed unable to do chrono then your team can jump on them and murder them so for example if you see someone who literally looks like oh this guy's probably gonna jump on me and you're stood near your tower killing creeps click the item on the hero your guy is going to start running towards going in range but then if you get a little bit further away than where you want to go just cancel it move back and then do the same thing again keep repeating this and then once the guy jumps on you he gets insta disabled and you can just murder him Number two on this list is super useful for anyone who has conjures such as Invoker. Now, the setting that I use for the conjures here is in settings and then options and then advanced options. In here, you can set what your summoned units are going to auto attack. Now, normally it's set to the, the standard one, of course, which will just make them attack anything nearby as long as you haven't moved them. So, for example, when I conjure my four spirits here, you're going to see they're immediately going to attack Ember Spirit. Now, this is okay, and it can be useful in some situations for quickly getting off an attack, but it's also a little bit awkward in lane if, for example, Ember Spirit was a creep and not like an actual hero. You may need to conjure your Forge Spirit in lane or any of the conjures that you have with any other hero to immediately attack uh, the Earthshaker. But if I've conjured and they've attacked this, I then have to wait that slight second, which is pretty important in some situations, before they can then attack the Earthshaker again. You're just missing out on a little bit of damage. If you change this to do either never or to have it the same as hero, which mine is, mine is never auto attack for my, my hero, uh, you can then have it set so that when you conjure them, they're not going to attack anything, meaning their attacks are ready immediately. So from this, I can conjure them here and then issue an attack command on the Earthshaker and immediately all of them are going to attack that target straight away that way i'm not wasting any cooldowns of attack rate and stuff so being able to do this obviously is just going to mean that you're going to get an extra couple of hits in straight away but considering these guys also uh, reduce armor and other conjures have important effects as well even though it's only just one auto attack is it could be the difference between someone killing you and you killing them instead when it's like a very very close thing that extra auto attack can definitely make a difference in the exact same location of the advanced options, you can actually set a timer for a minimap misclick protection. Now, this may seem like something that, okay, just, just stop clicking the minimap, you idiot, right? <laughs> you would think so, but I screw this up all the time. Now, if you are someone who accidentally clicks their minimap a lot, I do it in fights. I'll be chasing someone, click my map, and I'm like, frick, and I got to double tap F1, get back to my character, and then your camera's all screwed up, and it's just, ugh. right, if this happens to you, set your timer on here so that it doesn't happen the way this works is it will have a certain amount of time that your mouse entering the minimap will not be able to click on the actual minimap this caps out at half a second mine is set to half a second because i do this way too much but you can set it lower it just means that if you accidentally drag your mouse in there and click it your camera is not going to fly all over the place this has been a lifesaver for me i still do it sometimes but very rarely compared to what i used to so it's a worthwhile thing to know about so this channel is growing pretty quickly and i appreciate every single one of you guys but many of you that watch all the videos haven't clicked that subscribe button yet so please check that you are subbed make sure you do click it it helps out an absolute ton and the more people that sub to the channel the bigger the channel gets and the more time i can spend making more content anyway well, let's get back to the video now this next example is going to be about the blink dagger now for this example i've actually enabled quick cast which i don't normally use but we're going to talk about that and, and why in just a second but keep an eye on the actual place of where my character is because the blink dagger has a little bit of a trick to getting the max range with it now with quick cast it's a little bit more difficult which is why we're starting with this but i'm on this little red patch here and you'll notice that the furthest i can blink is around about this rock here if i put my my cursor over here and then blink right i get onto this rock here and then i can blink back but uh, if you go outside the range of a blink dagger the actual like 1200 range you're not going to be able to go the max distance however if you know where the about the max distance is which is about here you can actually blink just past where it's going to take you 
unless you go too far. Now, as you can see, we made a little bit of a mistake with that last one by like, oh, it might be here. We end up all the way back here. But if we know it's, you know, a little bit more further out, then we can get that little bit of extra distance, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but it definitely is if you're trying to reach something like over a cliff, for example. Uh, you can make that big difference unless you go like this and you end up like not going quite far enough and you're ah shit damn damn i could have got over there but I, I i screwed it up now if you disable quick cast but even if it's just for the, this uh this bling dagger you can actually see the range of it so i know that as long as i click inside the circle boom, we're gonna get the max distance out of this and we can do this every single time without fail because we can actually see where the edge is so this is a lot easier for me i like to not have um it on quick cast but if you guys do use it then obviously uh, you'll have to just sort of get used to it over time but i know from here i can reach over this cliff and i know i can reach back but obviously before we saw if i went like this uh, we just don't quite make it and this is pretty important like it doesn't make a big difference so one i would probably suggest not using quick cast for it anyway that's just my personal preference uh, but two it get used to the actual range of this because if you click outside of the range you go shorter looking to the range you can go further so very important all right so for this final one is kind of going to be another invoker tip but this works for anybody who else who has an invis as well and that is that you can actually dodge projectiles and some other abilities that you can take advantage of by going invis too now you might be thinking of course but they're just going to have dust a lot of people aren't going to buy dust on your on you just because of an invoker or they're not going to use it unless you're invis already uh, and in this situation it's already too late so the example is, for example, a Vein Spirit. Can you come over and use the, the Magic Missile, right? Now, this can be bad, but if you're planning on going on Venge and you know she's going to stun you, and that can be the difference between you getting her or not, you can ready up Ghost Walk and then maybe like your Cold Snap or something. Or if you're fast enough, you can just invoke it anyway. Uh, and then when she goes to cast this on you, you just go Invis, and then you can immediately go on her like this. You've dodged it. And like I say, you're not taking advantage of the actual Invis to go, stay invisible and get away you're purely using it to dodge so you're going on her she's not going to dust just because you're going on her you know so then you can go on her like this and you can take advantage of it and you can just dodge that spell now this works of course the same with with wraith king stun as well it's the same idea it's going to use this you're going to go invis oops maybe we we'll use a little, little, little bit quick then we're going to go invis and we can do the exact same thing it's all the same idea this also works for skyrath's uh slow it doesn't work for the arcane bolt unfortunately if i use arcane bolt and then go invis it's still going to hit me and deal the damage but if we do it with the, the slow and then go invis no damage and it completely negates it no slow or anything like that so it's super useful and a lot of stuff now another one you can do which jugs are going to pick up on this pretty quick so this is why this is just quickly mentioned at the end is if you gulch you you can bait it and go invis it's going to stop straight away but he is going to buy dust like this is this will happen maybe once in a game you can know you can go on him in a lane and you're like okay i can see that he's probably he's going to be all right he doesn't have dust you see like, he doesn't have dust uh, and then later on check if he has and if he does don't do it uh, and then when you go to attack him and you're like you're going on him and he's like oh shit i'm gonna die he's gonna ult you and then you just go invis and it's gonna immediately stop or go to something else obviously and then you can come back out again and kill him after that so but the, always check always check if he has the dust first if you're going to do this uh, and obviously anyone else that they, they're probably going to bait a stun from you can you can go on them hit them hit them hit them and then as they do the stun you go invis and then you come immediately out and kill them so you can do this with invoker you can do it with anyone who has uh, another invis but you need to take into account their fade time invokers invis is instant which is why i use them as the example but if we get Bounty Hunter, for example, it's going to be a bit harder to do just because of his fade time. So the fade time on this is 0.25 seconds at the max level, which is not too bad. But if we go and use the Q, we're going to have to go invis very quickly to make sure we actually get it. If we're very close, this is going to be a lot harder to do. We'll throw this at this guy, and then we'll use the Q. We'll go invis, and you see it's still going to hit. But if we've got a distance from it, we know that we're okay because we've got a bit of distance. We can get away with it and dodge it just like that. So super useful. This is one that's taken a little bit longer to explain, but it's definitely worth it. And hopefully you find it useful. Well, with that done and out of the way, there's five things that you should have known about Dota 2, but maybe you didn't know all of them. Was there any that you didn't know? Let me know in the comments. Be honest about it. And if you can think of more, leave them down there. I'll screenshot your comment for a future video and I'll put your name in there to give you credit as well. So other than that, sub to the channel. It helps out tons. Leave a like, share it with your friends, all that sort of good stuff. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye.